Thank you for coming to my session. Uh, talk, whatever you say. Uh, it's a bit of for me feeling at the home, feeling the similar faces to the co workers here. <laughs> I, I feel very comfortable. <laughs> um, again, thank you for coming today. We're going to talk about the Selenium running in the right environment. <coughs> um, if, if you feel that I'm going to leave, the technical stuff and you introduce the other stuff to stop me up the questions can um, adjust adjust a little bit to the, to the audience. So I'm totally fine if you will interrupt me in the middle and you ask some question on the slide. Instead of keeping the question till the end and forget about it. Yep. Um, so I guess Shaki will help us, our monitor. So she's here, if you need a question, just write the hand Shaki will bring the microphone so, Okay, do you hear me well? Okay, that's it. Sure. Louder, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm Sarkis. Um, yeah, maybe I can do it. Wait, it's too much. Uh, I'm Sarkis, working uh, for for Pizza and the director of health insurance. Uh, my main experience in the industry is about the 10 years, mainly uh, in the automation space, which was there. Um, yeah, my first investment to do in the past my first piece of body. Uh, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the Selenium stuff, how to run in a dockerized environment, and how to use the parallel, how to use the docker to run the parallel. Uh, just uh, going through the main topics, you will talk about the Selenium grid, uh, about the local Selenium, how to do configure the Selenium grid with the Docker containers, running the Selenium in a parallel, uh, creating and maintaining Docker Compost file, how, how you can do that, and how you can debug your site using the GNC. And um, in the end, we will talk about the Selenium and the source stuff, and then uh, I will try to keep for your questions time. But uh, I guess after this talk, I will be around for several hours if you, if you have some questions about this couple direct to me. So, uh, uh, there is a good news because the uh, previous uh, talk uh, finished a bit early. I was able to set up everything in my computer so you can also see the, all the examples that I will show in the end. I will show the live how it looks like, how running looks like, and so that, like all the stuff. So, uh, why we need to run the box? Just, just for me, the information, um, the moderator, who is familiar with the Selenium? Doctorizing, paralyzing. Okay, it's good. Uh, so, if you, you are exactly in the, in the right place, you are most of you using the Selenium, and uh, some of you are using parallel. <coughs> okay, so, it's the next step for it. Um, so, why we need to actually run in parallel? parallel yeah? Um, the Selenium suites, all of you know, they are slow. They need a time, they need adaptation, they need like, taking care of for them every day, every single day, so to, to, to give a value. So, um, in the parallel test, um, one of the benefits, you have a possibility to run your suite with a different set of the configuration. So you, you can parallel run on different browsers, in a different version, in different hosts, etc. Uh, you save a time. So time is money. And especially when you are uh, doing well, uh, you have a well uh, configured automation framework, which is running, for example, on the Amazon servers, uh, which like uh, company is paying per minute. So uh, time is really, really important. And it's, it's like uh, money consuming. So, parallel, parallelization will give opportunity to save a time. And of course, it will reduce the cost per run. Uh, it also will give a possibility to cover more browsers, more operation systems, will give a faster feedback, and uh, it will help people to do less manual things. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons the fast feedback is uh, one of the main uh, vision of the automation to give a fast feedback about the broken features and stuff. So uh, uh, I would like uh, I want to pay attention to the two main uh, advantages. It's the time and the fast feedback, which is like also time each other. But 
But there is nothing like ideal good. Yes, there are some stuff that could be better or so there's some disadvantages also. Uh, so uh, here are some disadvantages that you can face while you are trying to configure your 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 Selenium suite to run in a parallel in the Docker. One is the low performance on the Selenium grid. If you had a chance ever work with the Selenium grid, you you probably feel the pain and sometimes you feel in hell because they are running so slow, their performance is so bad, they are consuming a lot of memory and like, you need to uh, configure it well. That's the reason that there are a lot of companies who introducing the modification of the Selenium grid, such as the, uh, Zelenium, Selenoid, and, uh, and several, there are several other modifications. So people who don't like the original one, they're trying to re uh, rework it and give a better solution. Uh, one is like better dealing with the memory, another is better dealing with the time, etc. So there are different modifications. One of the modifications will be presented in the end of this slide, but uh, I mean the logic is the same if you want to use another one, so it's like just a difference of the command. Um, set up in parallel run is really takes the time until you will get to the point that it will be like working for you and give, give, give you a value. And uh, in case of the large amount of tests, you will need to divide your suite to the small suites and push to the servers and run it in the parallel in the different servers and then collect the uh, results. Because that um, as the uh, grid is consuming too much memory, they are like after a while, after one hour running, they need to, to be reloaded. And if you divide it to the, the small machines, you will get better performance. Um, and the next disadvantage is when you are dividing your huge amount of the test to the, to the slab, to the, to the servers, and they are running there, you will have a difficulty to get the feedback back from the small servers and collect everything in one place to have a better visibility on transparency. And another disadvantage working with the Dockers um, is you will have a uh, you, will, you will have to spend some time on the configuration of uploading and downloading files because as your uh, code is running in one machine and your browser is open in another machine which are documents, the Docker containers, you have to create some bridge and mounting that volumes to be able to upload and download uh, the files in, in the browser. Um, there are many more disadvantages, but these ones are the, the ones that I face in my experience and um, uh, I, I was uh, also exploring the information, but still uh, maybe you will face another one. So, <coughs> so actually what is Selenium Grid? Please don't read this, this is better for you. If I share the slide, you can go deeper in the information. But uh, basically Selenium, uh, Selenium Grid is a smart proxy server which is gets the request to run the best and then connect to the browser and then like um, like making a trace and stuff so it's uh, it's kind of uh, in, a, in a short way say it's like smart proxy server which would manage all your threads and um, for the better understanding um, I will show you this um, uh, graphic so we don't know here. So <coughs> basically, you you see here Selenium Hub, yeah, uh, which is uh, which has a connected browser, which are the nodes. Yeah, this is a simple Selenium grid example, and of course they could be like also Internet Explorer and the other like Safari, Opera, everything. But this is a kind of a simple example we are working with, with um, Chrome and the Firefox. Yes, um, Hub. The part, this part, is is a manager. It accepts the request to run the test, takes the invert client and execute them remotely on the nodes. So this part is getting the request and running the test in the nodes. Yeah? And uh, it also manage the threads. So the these nodes are it's the place where the browsers are living. So, in this, in this node, for example, the Chrome driver is living. Another one is the uh, Firefox is living, and that's all. They are uh, registering themselves in the node, so they have a specified port. They are coming and sitting near the place and waiting for the request to get from the hub. Mm -hmm. And then they execute the run. Yeah. 
this is non-dockerized um, example of the selenium group. Mm -hmm. So when we are saying let's dockerize it, yes, what does it mean? Uh -huh. It basically means that every single piece of this infrastructure will run separately inside a, a Docker container. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like uh, in the image, it's like it should be clear that we put the hub in one Docker container and every node itself we are putting inside the Docker container. And then we are connecting this one with the port and with the bridges to each other so every piece of this um, like diagram can see each other. Is it clear? Oh, yeah. So basically, uh, Selenium official contributors offers us the official images of Selenium, which is like the Selenium hub image, then not um, for the Firefox, not for the Chrome, and then the debug version, two debug versions. This has the only uh, Selenium images that are provided by the creators of the Selenium. Uh, but you, you will find other ones by the other contributors, the third party contributors. Um, uh, they are not part of it. But all of them mainly based on these simple images. Yeah? So, um, have you ever heard about Selenium? Or Selenoid? Some of you. It's the same as most. I mean, the idea is the same, the implementation is totally different. Have you ever heard about uh, Zalando? This is famous German. That's the most successful startup. It's like German Amazon, and they have a very good tech organization. The Zalenium is the open source by Zal Zalando, so why it's called Zalenium? Um, what actually they did? They were saying, okay, this is consuming more a lot of time. So every time, run the node, register in the feed, and then give them opportunity to run. And they decided, like, why if we will create some smart proxy? which will create the node on the spot. I have no node, I get the request, I will create it for you a node. So we are automating uh, some DevOps part of the running the um, This also has, will have some disadvantage of consuming the memory and the stuff, but, uh, but it, it will also give you advantage. That's the best. Um, what is Zalenium? It's on-demand Selenium grid, dynamic which is on the spot to create and destroy the nodes. Uh, it's based on the Docker Selenium. They are again using the same Docker images that we uh, I was talking in previous slides. And it's very simple to set up. And uh, if you ask why Selenium, because the Selenium grid, as I mentioned before, it's like has low performance, it's hard to maintain. And uh, this one allowing you uh, to have this possible and the flexible selenium, which means that you will not be required to create the node by yourself. You will just ask the capability it will create the node on the spot for you. Yeah. There is some additional um, features that for the selenium. If the same feature has also selenium. I mean, all the modifications usually do this one. Um, so you can record your test run. I don't know why you need it. I mean, I never need that video recorded ever. But it's always fun. That we can record it and give it to you. You can sit and watch your videos, yes. Uh, in, my, in my experience, the, the screenshot and the log was more than enough for me to, to understand what was happening there. And if there is need, I can just connect to the, to the container, to the, to the grid and node, and understand what, like, debug it and understand what's happening there. But still, I, I meet a lot of people that video recordings are pretty informative and they help us. So, but for those people who really find the help there, there is opportunity just we can record. And there is a better opportunity. You can say just keep the video recording, keep this test, keep past the stream of it. So just to keep the time. Um, there is uh, basic authentication protection when uh, deploying Zelenium to the Amazon servers uh, or other from the on our cloud services. Uh, services. Um, this is um, mainly uh, saves time again using the services and then deploying the stuff. So. And there is um, easy way to mounting containers. This is mainly for solving that downloading and uploading issue when you have 
five downloads in one container, and you can see it's about from another. Um, basically, this is the diagram of how Selenium is working. Um, we have here the machine uh, which is ready to send the request to the hub. Here, this is this is the smart proxy that actually Selenium looks at. In this smart proxy, it's get the request and deciding what to do with that request. It's if it can create a node for it, it creates a node on the spot and then sends the request to that node. Yeah? So you you shouldn't predefine your node. You just ask for the node, it's created on the spot the node and you do that. And we have here uh, do, do you know about the soft lab browser stack test project? There, there are a lot of uh, this kind of projects. These are the pro like uh, the, the famous one is a uh, source lab because it's owned by the same contributors of the web driver. So they create a web driver, open source it for free, of ser like selling the services. And of course, uh, the, the source lab is one of the most developed because they are working together and they know how to make it better. Uh, and I will show you source lab example also here. And the browser stack is the India based one. It's uh, doing the same thing, exactly the thing, a bit cheaper. Yeah. And there are some other options. Also. This is the like, uh, famous one that I said. So, and there is a one proxy for the browser stack and the source lab. This is one of the features I, I, I really like it. Uh, if, when we are talking about the stalkers, uh, there is usually coming the question, but what about the Windows? I mean, um, lot, lots of uh, company, companies' customer base, especially in the US, they are using Internet Explorer. And sometimes it's even Internet Explorer 8, 9, something like all that they are starving on that, especially running the Selenium's on that. So I, I put some places that spent the pain sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, in, in my ex experience, we were forced to support an Internet Explorer 7 for, uh, yeah, I mean, there was already 11, but this was 7, 8. Yeah, and in these cases, um, this is the smart way of sending the request, only the request that are, for example, Windows, go to the source lab. If it's not, so we can provide it, this browser, for example, Chrome, will create in our server, will save money, basically. Yeah? And um, this, is show how, uh, this is shows how it works. I mean, if you are requiring some Windows Internet Explorer or Mac Safari, which we, we cannot provide with the Docker, the smart proxy making a decision to send it to SOSLAB. Of course, if you have a account set up. So, uh, we have a capability, like limited amount of the capability that we can create on the spot on the Docker. So, when that proxy, get, that this smart proxy gets the request that is not able to create on the spot, it's checking whenever SOSLAB or browser stack, whatever can provide this capability. For example, Windows XP IE 7. If it can, it sends this to them. And it's going and running and then reporting it to you. Yeah? So, um, this is, do you have any questions here? Is, is it clear? Like, more or less. Uh, later I will provide all the links and the sources where you can just get the full information of it. Yeah, so right now I want to show you some that practical stuff, this is the theoretical stuff, okay, we understand that there is a good way of running, but how, that this is becoming the next question. So, uh, uh, also the slides, I guess, will be shared, even these slides are in my slide share account, so you can find it there also, uh, and just use these commands that I post here. Uh, basically, now we'll go through the, through the steps, how you can set up uh, a run, parallel run, using the Docker Selenium. There is a two main um, images that you need to download. And uh, if you're familiar more or less with the Docker, it's a Docker tool and the image location, Docker tool and the image location, yeah? And after, uh, after the pooling, when we have locally these images, we just run this command. Uh, basically what this is doing, this gives the name and saying the mounting the container 444 port to the, your local machine port 4444. Four, four, four. So, 
Uh, this is the version of the Docker, so if it's less than this uh, number, it will not run, you need to have to be updated. Here we are mounting the location, so all the logs and the stuff will be on the local machine. Here we are mounting the video folder location, so after the recording the video, it will be able to send it to your local machine, so you will be able to run it. And just um, saying that run the Dalai. Next up. So, Let's see how we should be. Like basically, when you go to command, line, I mean, you you have to have a pre-installed for like for them Docker and Java and stuff, this basic stuff. You just say Docker pull, and then in this time I had a lot to be downloaded. It was so fast. But the second one it was downloaded, so it will take the time to download it. So it's just downloads all the two images. Yeah. After you have everything downloaded, like these two images. Uh, you run the command, but you saw that the command is too long and ugly. It's hard to remember every time, or, or you need to go copy and paste. Uh, do you know uh, about Docker Compose? No. Okay. Docker Compose is a small application coming with the Docker, which helps you to collect all your properties and the running uh, parameters in one YAML file, and. If you want to run that one, you go in the thing that just Docker Compose off. And all the parameters you have saved in your machine and you're just saying Docker off, it's reading from the from the file and then uh, running running all the images there. So this is the simple um, uh, this is the simple example of the Docker Compose file. If you will pay attention, you will see exactly the same parameters that I show you on the command. Yeah, uh, there is an image name which we have there. There is a name which we have there. There is a host name which is in the command is the same is the same as the name. Uh, there is a mounting this folder for the videos and stuff. There is a mounting the post. I mean exactly the same properties we are collecting here with a with a specific pattern. And then we just say Docker compose up for create and it will create everything. All these Docker comp Compose file even you can copy from their documentation. I will show in the end. Just copy, just pay. I'm, I'm just trying to explain the basics so you will understand which side is for this. And then you have this uh, grid is running there. This is the Dalai grid. It's super fast, actually. I prepared everything. Everything I you see in this video will do on the spot. We'll try to run together. Usually it fails when you are on the spot doing something. <laughs> Yeah. So and um, okay, we have a grid there running. Everything is ready, but let's start actually running the test on it. Um, this is the simple creation of the web driver. We just say that we need a Chrome, yeah. and then we say that our remote server is in the local host port. Yeah. There is nothing super extraordinary, and then. When we have this grid running there, we do the running the best. And here you will pay attention that these nodes will get busy. You see, these ones are busy, these ones are free from the color. And then there is a light preview. You can just see actually what's happening inside the container. Yeah? When you need to debug it or some or, or see actually that it works there or doesn't work. So this is everyone is a separate container with node with the, it's a node with the browser. So this is the visualization of it. So you can just open and see what's happening inside the container. Yep. And you see that the tests are running there and then uh, and this is the okay, it was too fast, but this is the Zelenium dashboard I will show you in the end. So where you can see the video recordings and stuff. So um, you already saw how you can see it, but let's go a bit deeper. Let's debug this test. Yeah, you, do, you do the debugging, you run the test, and then you go to the uh, grid. You see that the one is the busy, and the debugger is stopped. In a live preview, you will have the container in a debug mode. So actually, you can do the full screen, and you see what you can do, and you can just even do something on it on the fly, and then find out why it wasn't working, why it was working so well that you want to destroy it. Yep. 
Um, so let's talk about the source lab. Um, to use the source lab, actually, you need the access key, which is you have to pay. But if you would go home and would like to try this one, just go ahead and register yourself in a website, like in a sourcelab.com, and you will get a trial, which will give you opportunity to test it for the 30 minutes. And if you think that there is a possibility that your company is ready to pay for these on-demand services to, to get more reliable like, uh, runs and stuff, uh, even you can contact with the source lab support, asking to prolong your trial for the evaluation period. Believe me, they will do, even for three months. Uh, <laughs> it's my own experience. Um, in my, uh, as in, a, in I, I just requested them to give me some notes for the educational purpose to show people, I mean, also for their marketing reasons, uh, and they give me like ten dedicated servers so I can every time just run on that post lab and show you what's happening there. So let's uh, find out how we can uh, create a combination of the source lab and the. Uh, and uh, uh, Zalenium. Again, uh, if I'm thinking about the Zalenium, don't think that uh, this is only for Zalenium. It also works for the Selenoid, for example. Yeah. So, I already talked about, uh, like, uh, about the source lab. So it's the same creators, it's the on-demand, like a, a cloud server that you can send your place. The browser will open in a source lab service, except servers, and then will run in their server servers, and then will give you back to the results. So basically, this is the source stuff in the two worlds. Uh, so uh, this is where the real browsers in the cloud, uh, they support all the pop popular languages. Uh, they you can specify platforms, like even even OS version, OS version, browser version, etc. And uh, spend less time on maintaining this infrastructure, because they will maintain it for you if you are just using it, paid. This is the simple graphic uh, how SOSLAB is working. So your test is here, your application is here. There is a way to, uh, even if you are testing it in under the VPN connection, because usually the test environments are under the VPN, um, you can create this secret connection, you create a tunnel and give that server access to your local, so it will be able to, uh, to open your testing environment. So when you run, its request is going to the SOSLAB. And there is a bunch of the choice that you can use there. I mean, lots of versions of the operation systems, all the browsers, and uh, you can also run here open text for the browsers and the app mobile application. But that's another story, so let's finish with the browsers. Um, so in this case, what I did, I did, also, for example, I say I cannot create a container for the Windows. So I cannot create a, a like run against the Docker container for the Windows and the Internet Explorer. So I did like, I want to run on an Edge browser, and I want the Windows platform to be Windows 10. Yeah? And uh, even I can give the exact version of the browser, like the build number. And then we have uh, this line which says that here should be your username and the access key, which you will get if you register in the source lab. And then this is the source lab URL and creating the tech, uh, uh, driver with this capability. So how you should run actually? If we are talking, um, you will see like I'm running the same command and add there is that line. This is the source lab. You open the Automation, automated test, and you see the tests are running on the Windows, on the Edge. Um, the connection from Armenia is not so good, but from other countries, when I tried it, it was like super fast. So uh, much faster than uh, my local environment. So, and you can see, again, the same videos, but you don't care this time because it's kept in their servers. So you don't need to allocate a volume in your uh, machines. You don't need to pay to keep that videos. The software are paying the source stuff this time. Okay, they can do. <laughs> they can live there, and you can sometimes open and see what's happening there. Okay? And um, th that was the pure, pure running on the source stuff. Now we will 
talk about the combination about the selenium and the source stuff, how we can combine this one to make it smarter. So if we can create a Docker, just create in our local server. If not, then send to run on a paid service. So basically, <coughs> uh, this is the only thing that you need to do. You just export uh, environment variables for your username, for your access key, and the source lab URL. Because source lab URL is sometimes changing based on the country and location. And then, this is the same command that we saw before. Just there is a, this line is added, which is already using, um, uh, using the username, access key, and the, and the, and the URL. Yep. Only, only this line is here added. And here the, the screen that we see, we have these local ones, and we have the soft lab 10 machines waiting for us. Which means if we will get the Chrome or Firefox request, it will go and run on the local. If we get, for example, Windows, Mac OS, or something that we don't have the opportunity to provide, it will go to the source lab service. Yeah. So let's see actually how um, this time we are we are doing the same, exactly the same. We don't care about the source lab URL because we give the source lab URL to the Selenium, and Selenium will decide if you don't have opportunity, will send to the source lab. So we are running against the local host for for for. And basically, when you run on Chrome, it will not touch. Source lab servers because we have the opportunity to to run it. If it's Chrome, it will go to the servers that we have. You see, these ones are busy, and the Chromes are the ones that we have. So we are not spending extra money on this. Okay, let's see Windows Seven. Yeah, sometimes we need to support it when there is a Chrome, but Chrome has to be in a Windows. Yeah. We again just giving this capability and again giving a local host for for for. Now what's gonna happen? The Zelenium Smart Proxy Server will see that there is no possibility to create the image in our infrastructure and it will simply forward it to the source stuff. And you will see that here there will be six um, yeah, busy ones. So it's went to the source stuff. And when you go to the source stuff, you see that actually the Lenin send it there and uh, it's running on, on the on the source lab account. Here all the tests are running. And even you can open during the run and again see live what's happening inside the uh, machine which is on the source lab. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So this is that kind, kind of a summary for the, for the talk. So uh, basically we used WebDriver, we used Selenium Grid, which is the uh, open source, this one from the Selenium. I presented you something from the source lab. Again, if it's source lab, it doesn't mean it's the best, it's the only one that you have to use. There are other services, you just choose the best for you. And of course, we use the Dockers. Yeah. Um, all the codes that I will show you right now after this one, um, uh, you can find it in my GitHub. So you can clone the code, you can try to, to do the same with this simple example, and then you can map it to your own uh, frameworks and run it in the same way. Yeah. Um, okay, um, this is not, I, I guess we have a still 15 minutes, I will use that time. Um, some of the time to show you like how it works, uh, not only video recording, and then we can have some time for the question and answer. And in case if you miss the chance to ask your questions, uh, you can meet me in the lobby in the conference area for the next couple of hours after this talk. And even if you miss that chance or service, you still have anything to talk, uh, you, you can access me in this uh, uh, email, Twitter, okay? So, um, let's go and I, I just want to, uh, the only thing that I did, let me mirror the screen. Okay.
Okay, we have the already. So um, before the before the talk, I had a chance to to download that two uh, images, so to not uh, have dependent on the. Uh, let's do like here. Okay. So this this was the first command. Yes, that I show you that you need to pull this image. Of course, if I would try to pull now, it will say that you have it locally because I did it in a half an hour before. Yeah. And the um, second one is um, second one was the Zalani one. Huh? That there one is a great one is a no. Provide so like not actually not it's like smart proxy. So this one I also have. And here, we have that long command, which is running. So if you run it in just a couple of seconds, you will have it ready. Okay. Let's go to the browser. And yes, here we have it. Read is running here, yeah, and we see the console, and we have just the two nodes just in case there. So if you request six parallel runs, it will create on the spot. So um, what we actually will do now, I mean, this is the code that you can download from the GitHub also. Um, uh, here we have it with the capability to create for the for the Chrome. And when you do save and test, and then following here, yeah, you see the two are busy, and there is a waiting with a queue. Yeah, and if you refresh one more time, refresh. It will create more. Uh, yeah, it's creating. More on the spot because there are queue on the request uh, on the on the request in the queue is creating the nodes on the spot and when it's finished it will destroy and free memory for you. Tests are finished it, it will be destroyed one by one and there will be this uh, panel for the viewing online that we saw when I mean they are finished already yeah test up. <coughs> They start finished, which means that this should be destroyed one by one. Not finished yet. Uh, okay, let's wait a bit more. And you can see the videos here. How the tests are running. And you see that it was passed, and then you can just play the video and see that it was going to sign up. And I mean, all the steps that you need. So it's going to start. Uh, here, this is the uh, Zalenium dashboard. Uh, this is the specific for the Zalenium only, uh, having this view and the stuff. And I hope that they, but they are destroyed now. Yeah, we don't have a node because they run and they done. They got. If we run once more again, it will create on the node. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, this was all. This was the one that I was to show you on the spot. I I know that it was a bit fast for this amount of the information, but still I hope that it will, it will be a help in your future career and the future work to make something not that better. So now if you have a question, I guess we, Shaki, we have 10 minutes, yes? So we have 10, okay, yeah. They are local images parallel on your machine, and they have this visibility to each other. So you create, they are in the same network, but they are, there is no Docker inside the Docker container inside the Docker container. You have parallel Docker container that are in the same network. Yes, Kako? Yes. <laughs> uh, I have um, in, in, in the big stuff, we are trying to make it happen also for the mobile apps. Uh, there are some um, some parts of the test suite that we have that are already possible to run, but there are some customization that we need to configure all these clouds 
and also for, 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 for our team is the next step to go. Yep. It is automatic. You don't have to install VNC separately. For the, for the um, official ones, if you want to uh, see what's happening inside the container, you have to install the VNC application, then you should open the ports for the debugging and then connect it. It's a like, huge process. Here, everything uh, automatically is inside the browser, so you don't need to install anything. It's the same for the celebrity. Yes. Uh, this is the most painful question to me because uh, I can't say which one is good. I can talk to you and understand which one is better for you because there are different needs. In my opinion, um, this one is heavy. Even the Docker images, for example, this is one of the differences. They are like one gigabyte or so. <laughs> of course, when you download it once, it stays in machine, so it's just off the image, takes the image from the local. You, you will notice the first time running it is a bit uh, slowly than the Selenoid. In the Selenoid, I mean, when this was there, there was a Selenoid. I mean, kind of after this successful open sourcing this project, the guys from the Yandex, I guess, decided to do something to sell. And actually, they succeed. And uh, in some points, they are better than this one. But uh, from time, and, and I like the idea that there is at least two uh, the same idea developers in the market because now there is a competition. One is adding feature, another thing. I mean, you are running so fast. For example, for the Selenoid, there is a um, um, uh, Go Grid Router, which is like uh, smart and light, and it's, it can manage a lot of threats. I guess David will talk about that tomorrow. I mean, yeah, actually, David is here. He's talking tomorrow the, in the last session. <laughs> uh, yeah, he will talk about the Selenoid. So when, uh, when we had a talk that he is going to, I said, I said that that's the exactly uh, right combination. So people who uh, like this one, they need to continue to hear, hear to David and to compare the ideas. So um, overall, um, two years ago, when I was comparing Selenoid with uh, Selenium, Selenoid was like, okay, I don't need this because this is not stable, this is nothing, uh, it can't help me to run the 6,000 based on the uh, people. But with the Selenium, we were able to set up some kind of the division of the servers and pack the small amount of the best into the servers and then get the feedback. Uh, but then, when after two years, I'm taking a look, I said, okay, Selenoid can work also. I mean, it's pretty ready for, for for using it for, um, and also um, just the uh, one thing that uh, will be a bit harder with the Selenoid uh, is this is very simple and the second, like several commands to run. For example, uh, in the Selenoid, when you want to have a UI view of your grid, you need to add another Docker, which is good and the bad. Good for the advanced level users because I mean I don't need a UI, I can see everything from command line down the command. But the, for the people who is beginner, they need to see what's happening there. But to see what's happening there, they have to actually uh, run another docker, and maybe they will need an assistance. So there, there are this kind of a difference, which is not a big value. I mean, you should find out which one works for you and go for that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you can do from the command line with the Docker command, you can just collect all the configuration and the parameters in the Docker Compose file and then run it it's the same way as you do from the command line with the Docker command. So this is just uh, collecting everything in one place and make it easy. Yeah, my point was that the actually overtaking that parameter and extending its node, which is running by himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, have you tried it with the uh, device 
Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about that in the next conference in um, in St. Petersburg on SKS, <laughs> and uh, I will go to deeper on that topic in India and Bangalore on Open Conference in the in the June. So there is a actually way that you can for for, for the Open you need that middle server running there, Open server which is connecting your web driver to the to the host and stuff. Actually. Um, that's another story, I cannot finish it in between the five minutes even. But basically what you do, you run the option service server inside the Docker container. And then you are opening the port for the USB, that's a, for, the, for the machine which uh, host, will host it. Then you connect a real device to that host. And, and after that, when you just uh, keep the host, it's going through the, through the uh, <laughs> Docker container and uh, working on the, on the real device. Yeah, this is super cool, but it's really hard to uh, it's hard to set up, uh, especially on the um, OS, uh, Mac OS environment, uh, as uh, it doesn't support some stuff. Uh, so basically, if you do want to do on a Mac environment, you have to use Docker machine, um, which is creates a Linux uh, virtual box, and then you are running inside the virtual box, and there is another headache to open the port through the virtual box and mount the port and open it. It's a bit a long story, but maybe even if you will not have a chance uh, to be in the conferences, uh, after the conferences, I will share the slides and uh, usually the SKD is posting the video. So, and you, if you will have uh, extra questions, I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's also another story, so it could be another topic, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, again, very short, I can say that. Uh, basically, I had the experience working with the report portal, which is open sourced by um, um, by uh, IPAM. And there is uh, ALU reporting, which is uh, open sourced by Yandex. Um, both, are, both are good for me. It depends uh, how your infrastructure is designed. If you are going with the Jenkins, you have a Jenkins piece, uh, you, are, you are ready to go with ALU using the Jenkins plugin, and everything will be integrated with the job. If you are doing your, your test run, for example, GitLab or, I don't know, Travis or something else, and you don't want to deal with a lot of scripting stuff to take all the data to send to another server to make it ALU reporting, um, the difference between the ALU and the report portal, the report portal actually is a separate server running this, running this service. And you just uh, configure your uh, framework to be connected to this server by API. And the, during, for example, test engine running, you add the listener, and after the run, send the test information to the server, and it will keep in a different, separated MongoDB, and then you will have a like, reporting service, reporting service uh, separate from, from your running, running environment. But um, I use both, but in my opinion, if it's Jenkins run, uh, it's fairly integrated with the ALU reporting and pretty cool when you can do some adjustment, merging reports, separating by area of the application and stuff like that. So let me, if you want to just ping me, I will send you a link for the audio or the portal. But what is the maximum number of other requests? It, it belongs on your server how powerful it is. <laughs> how, how much you can scale it. Uh, I never did on that because we were always running on the Amazon servers and we were thinking about it. Yeah, with high master, yeah. I, I, I will finish soon. <laughs> uh, uh, there was uh, that the one, do you, do you remember that with how much it was like 16? Maybe, maybe a gigabyte of RAM or some server that we were running. So I, I can't say for the other hand, I said that it like, requires it's yes, so one of the difference between the Selenoid and the uh, Selenium. I'm pretty sure with the same capacity you will not have enough memory to run the same amount of the threads, but you will have other packages. Yeah, but, but uh, if you go to the, I mean, I often yeah, I forget to show, just go to this website which is for the Selenium and actually um, you can do also for Selenium Selenoid Yeah. This is the GG 
PR, but this is, this is the grid, but basically you can go here and see all the available services and documentation here for the solenoid, um, for the configuration manager. This is the UI differences that every service has this UI tools that you need to often borrow and connect to each other. So, uh, these are the main two websites that you can go for the documentation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much again. So, hope that this was a bit helpful for you. So,